Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about the loops in shell scripting. Here is the learning outcome. By the end of this session, students will be able to implement loops by using shell scripting. So this is the outline where we'll, I'll be first of all introducing you uh, by taking a couple of examples of the generic uh, general programming uh, language conditional statements and then I'll be uh, demonstrating you with the help of uh, example. So before proceeding ahead, it's a good moment uh, to discuss about what is meant by conditional statement in a computer program. You can pause the video for a while and think on this and then you can resume the video to find the answer. So this is what we have uh, in the form of a flowchart that is available on the screen where uh, a conditional statement generally has a sort of condition and uh, generally as we are aware that a condition would be either true or false. If it's true then we can put a certain piece of code that would loop continuously until the condition is met. So that's how uh, it is represented with the help of this simple flowchart. So in a computer program the code begins then uh, we write a condition like uh, whether a specific content is equal to x, y, z and if it is equal then uh, a piece of code is executed and if it is false then either we can end the code execution or we can write another piece of code which would uh, indicate the user that the condition is false. So it is always the choice of the developer like whether to allow the code to be looping until the condition is completely true or a specific condition is met. So you can either go with the active high kind of a condition looping or you can even go for active false uh, of a condition looping. Further, you can even write a piece of code under the false condition which will uh, allow the user to execute these set of statements when the condition is completely false and then ultimately we end up with the code execution. Now, to be sp more specific about the shell scripting, as you can see, uh, we have uh, the following types of loops available in shell scripting. The first one is if else, which is just a simple single condition based uh, looping statement or a single conditional statement where you can only mention a single condition. Another is uh, whenever you want to write multiple if else, if else, if else, like what we generally do in C language and other uh, programming languages, then here the structure is if and elif and then it can be continued further until you completely end up the loop by writing its end determination keyword called fi. And next we have loops, the for loop, the while loop and the until loop. I'll show you a couple of these by showing a set of a demonstration. So let's have a look at the demonstration now. Okay, as you can see, uh, I have uh, logged in into the Ubuntu terminal. Now as usual, let's make a small uh, directory like I'll be calling it v5. Let me first of all make a folder called v5, then I'll enter into that. And let me show you that I don't have anything currently present inside this. So let us go for uh, creation of a file called if test.sh. So I'm trying to open a new file called if test. Now let's follow the general process of mentioning the shebang. This is this is the shebang. Then we have. Uh, let's begin with writing the shell code for demonstrating the if loop. I'll write a simple program. Okay, let me first let me write something which would prompt the user to enter a number. So this statement is very simple where it will prompt the user to enter his age. Then I'll try to read this in a variable called age. Now I'll put an if condition. Now you can have a look at the syntax. Now let's have a look at the basic if loop syntax that is you need to simply write an if uh, everything in lowercase then put a square braces then inside this make sure that uh, you put double spaces I mean to say that whatever you type inside this uh, it should not touch these braces so that's the syntax if your internal content of the bracket of your if condition is touching these braces then it is going to uh, invoke some sort of errors so you need to be very uh, 
disciplined as far as these uh, conditions of writing if loop is concerned. So I'll read. the age that the person is trying to enter and I'm going to try. So unlike the uh, symbols that we generally use in C language like this, we need to write something like a greater than or equal to. For example, I want to simply assess whether the user entered age is going to be greater than or equal to 18. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, output a statement or print a statement to the console stating that whether he is uh, capable to vote or not. So that's what I'm currently trying to program. So. I'm putting this GE to indicate that uh, the age content is greater than or equals to 18. And then I simply put a semicolon and then I can write then. So if this is true, then I'm going to print to the console like you are eligible to vote under else I'm going to put you can't vote. So if the user is trying to enter any age uh, value less than 18 or any value other than 18 uh, especially on the lower side on the lower limits of 18 then it should probably print you can't vote. So let's quickly check I'm going to save this now as usual we need to first of all change the mode of this file now make sure it's displayed in green which is a meaning that it is going to be an executable now i can simply put a dollar slash and uh, sorry dot slash and if test dot sh okay it's giving me an error stating that uh, bin slash bash okay so let me quickly change this I forgot to mention the slash okay so it's asking me to enter the age for example if I'm uh, writing some value like 25 it says unexpected let me check what's the error unexpected in of line okay so it is very important to uh, understand what the error exactly says so it, it is saying that the file called if test.sh is not properly terminated. So let's go back quickly and let me indicate what error we have done. So the error is we have written that if we have uh, written the else condition but uh, we forgot to end the file. So remember if must be ended with the reverse of if that is fi. So whenever it finds the fi keyword it is going to identify that it's the end of your if loop. So let me quickly save it again, clear the terminal and Sorry, if it's asking me the age, let me enter 25, for example. Uh, it says, yes, uh, since the condition is met, that like 18 is uh, less than 25 or 25 is greater than 18, uh, it states that you are eligible to vote. Similarly, if I execute it again and if I'm writing 8, it should display you can't vote. Yes, so that's how we, uh, we have successfully uh, verified the working of if else. Now let me demonstrate you uh, something else. I'm going to write or modify the same program into something else. So uh, let me say I'm having three colors, red, green, and blue. I'm having three colors, red, green, and blue. Uh, I'm going to prompt the user to select red or green or blue, okay. So I'm going to name this variable as color. I'm going to read this color and I'm going to compare. This time I'm going to compare strings. So I have purposefully selected this example so that uh, you can understand how to write these things for strings as well as integers. Make sure you are maintaining the space between the bracket and the equal to sign. So whenever I'm comparing strings, I will be using a double equal to sign. Uh, and I'll be comparing and I'll be comparing red if the color is red I'll say you selected red now I want to 
have another if condition means I want something where I can mention a condition which was not possible uh, to be mentioned under the else condition. So that's the reason why uh, we prefer writing if l if. So the only change in else is going to be this. I'm going to keep it as it is and I'll be going for uh, elif which stands for else if means it's a recursive if else kind of a uh, process where you can mention another condition. Again follow the same condition like I'm going to read color and I'm going to compare it with whether I have selected green or not. Make sure you're maintaining proper spaces between these parentheses and then I put a semicolon then write then and you can echo whatever you want here. I'll be writing your Your selected color is red. Similarly, here I'm in right. If it's true with the green condition, it will be displaying me your selected color is green. Otherwise, means for the third condition, which where I'm not mentioning any uh, sort of condition, that is anything other than red and green is going to be uh, the blue color. So let's quickly save this and check since I have the same name given to this one. E and okay. Yes, so it, it is showing me that I have selected the green condition. If you see the code, you will understand that I have typed green here, which is a meaning that my L if condition has become true. Now let me try to execute it again by this time I will write something else. Uh, let me call ABC. I have selected ABC. Then I want the else condition to be set true. Yes. So as you can see, I have typed anything other than red and green. It's a meaning that that ABC is coming under the else condition. Here are the references used for this video. Thank you.